it's been a while since I've worked on this guitar. I wished I could put more time in on it, but you know how that is. Life and all the other things that happen around here in terms of my business just keep me from working on it. So I'm going to devote a few minutes to it right now. And what I think I'm going to do is clean up this back the back to the sides. Uh, the, the back is proud in places. I left it a little oversized, not real big, but in places it's a little proud. Other places it's maybe even a hair shallow, but the binding will cover that. So we're just going to get it all trimmed down and get it smooth, and then maybe we'll work on some binding. I'm using this finger plane. I there's a lot of ways you could do this. I, I like to use the finger plane because I have very good control with it. And this wood is so brittle, but this being so sharp, it'll cut it really good as long as you're going the right way with the grain. The grain here is going at an angle across here, so I'm cutting the ends of that angle off. And that's okay, but if I went against it, it would lift it right up and chip it. I was driving down a lonely road on a dark and stormy night When a little girl by the roadside showed up in my headline I stopped, she crawled in the back and in a shaky tone She said, my name is Mary, please won't you take me home had been so frightened alone there in the night There was something strange about her Her face was deadly white She sat there pale and white In the back seat all alone I never will forget that night I took Mary home the guitar a rough sanding. I think you can see these dark lines in here and stuff. This was from when we bent the side. i just show you how easy that comes out. It's really, it looks bad, but there's really nothing to it. I mean, it takes a little bit of elbow grease, but not that much. I pulled into the driveway where she told me to go I got out to help her from the car then I opened up the door but I just could not believe my eyes for the back seat was bare Someone opened up the door And I asked about the little girl That I was searching for The lady gently smiled And she brushed a tear away She said it sure was nice of you To go out of your way well, it's up in, uh, you know, I would say medium shape in terms of, uh, you know, cleaned up and all that. The uh, We got the bind, you know, the edges are all smooth now. I rounded this off quite a bit. It's not probably finished yet, but uh, I think what I'm going to do now is, uh, before I go any further, I've been saving for years lots of little small decorative pieces of wood and exotic pieces of wood and I'm going to go in the other, other part of the shop see what I've got that would make some really nice binding for this like maybe some curly maple and maybe some ebony and some things like that 
and we'll see what we've got that we can make something out of that would look really cool. Got some curly maple, we're gonna make some binding. Thirteen years of golden night in a red just down the road. Our darling Mary lost her life and we miss her so. Thank you for your trouble and the kindness you have shown. You're the thirteenth one that's been here bringing Mary home. about 62 thousandths which is about a standard thickness for a, a white binding uh, 60 thousandths is about standard but 62 will just be fine so we'll go with that now we're going to rip it down into about 300 thousandths inch thick strips I probably won't leave them that tall but I want to have them a little bit of room to play with before I uh, rip this I'll just mention that I already jointed this closest edge uh, so that it'd be good and straight and now we're going to run it through the bandsaw and cut, cut them into about 300 thousandths uh, inch wide strips. If you divide that by 40, that'll give you about how many millimeters you're talking about. One of the things that I like to do is reuse and use as much material as I can to get the life out of it and, you know, and just not waste stuff. And so over the years, and this is not all of it, trust me, but these are some of the bigger pieces, I've saved tons of this uh, fretboard material. And I've always thought, I wonder what I could do with that. But, you know, and every once in a while, a piece is good enough to use for like a nut on a small instrument or, or, or something. But, you know, I just got to thinking, I just, I don't really need a big piece of the black for the decorative trim inside the uh, white. It doesn't have to be the same width as the white. I can cut it down much narrower. So what I was thinking, I was going to probably cut about a... Uh, Oh, I'll start with about a 50 thousandths cut off the back of this. And, you know, these will be short pieces, but when you piece all that black together and you butt the ends together, I don't think you'll see the joints anyway, because uh, black, you know, black to black with a black joint, you know, you just don't see it. So, and plus I'll make sure that the joints are really tight. So I think I can reuse all of this wood and make some really nice decorative black trim with it. So that's what we're going to try to do. And it may not work, but I believe it will. So we're going to give it a shot. Well, I changed my whole life. No more corporate strife. Put your alarm clock away in the drawer. No more conference calls and no meetings in the halls and no business to conduct in a ball. And no self-serving boss, nor the threat of the loss of the paycheck that I've earned. Well, I've got about a dozen pieces here that are thirty thousandths of an inch thick. And I just ran them right through my little thickness sander, as you saw. And what's really cool about that little thickness sander is it's small enough and dainty enough you can just run these little tiny thin things right through it. I don't have to have a backer board. I don't have to use any two-way tape. I don't have to do anything special. It just runs them right through and it does a really nice job. Thirty thousandths of an inch for my millimeter friends would be about three quarters of a, of a millimeter. So that's pretty darn thin, let me tell you. I'm getting ready to rip these little strips down to about 80 thousandths uh, wide or tall. And I'm just trying to make sure I'm cutting on the right side because one side is fairly straight, the other side was rough cut. Here we go. Because I'll be out on that ranch 
branch where I can reach the first branch of that corporate tree grown from on high. I don't own it, I just manage its worth. It's a small slice of heaven place down here on earth. Care for his trees, water his son. I don't own it, I just rent it from God. I'd like to take time and get everybody's opinion on this, but I just don't have the time. The way I was leaning was putting this white uh, curly maple binding on the outside edges, which the, that curl will show up, which I think will be nice. I've seen that many times before. And then I was thinking of putting a white, black, white inside of that. So in other words, it would end up being something, well, I can't really hold it very well, but it would be something like a white, black, white like that. I can't really hold it very well. But then I got to thinking, you know, I've got the herringbone here, as you can see. And then I've got this herringbone pre-bent binding and it's real herringbone wood. My only problem with, I would put this on there without a second thought, my only problem is this coming around here because of this bend over. I could leave that intact, go in front of that and, and go ahead and then make it match back to this and go in front of it and make it make, match, match back to that. But there will have to be a little bit of exposed white in between here, but I don't think that'll look all that bad. I don't know, it's, it's hard to say what that's going to look like, but I don't think it'll look bad. So I may just go with that. It's definitely a tough call. Either way, I'm going to start, either way I go, I'm going to start by routing the slot for this white, thicker binding first. So I'm going to go ahead and route this slot first, leaving this area alone, just route everything else and then start putting my ideas together. I'm just gonna let my ideas build as I go because I'm not really sure. I've never done this before, so this is kind of on the fly design here. Got that pretty rounded over though. It does feel kind of nice compared to the sharp corner. I've done test fit up on this and maybe you can see that it matches pretty darn tight right there. It's pretty smooth. It's just about the right height this way too. Just a hair, it's a little bit tall, which is what I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to cut that slot. I'm gonna stay away from this a little bit, but everything else I'm gonna try to cut. Wish me luck, here we go. <music> I tell them I'm history, that's okay for I've got a plan And there'll be no regret, no hard feelings, no debt We're all doing the best we can So here is my last word, some may think it absurd But I know that someday you'll find It's better to leave than to stay and to grieve Instead of a paycheck your have peace of mind I don't want it to just manage its worth I've decided I'm going to go ahead and put in the herringbone so I've got the cutter set for the herringbone and here we go Small slice of heaven place down here on earth I care for his trees I water his son I don't know it just read it from God got the binding slot routed for the herringbone and uh, the herringbone trim. By the way, you would think you would start up at the neck end, 
But this is the better end to start at with this herringbone because you can make sure that this pattern that you're going to see uh, is symmetrical right here where they're going to meet up. One's going to go this way and the other one's going to go the other way. And so I cut it off with one full um, tail showing here on the white. And that way I can butt it up with a full tail showing on the other white and then go the other way and it'll just look better rather than just some mixed up match here at this joint and you won't see the joint under the neck so that's why this one's more important okay well then you know I could just put it like this and trust me that would be a very pretty inlay and all that um, you know I could I could just do this and call it good and I think it would really look nice but <laughs> you know me if I put this white in there first, then put this, I just think that's even going to look better. And uh, it's just going to look that much nicer. So that's what I'm going to do, but unfortunately that means I have to route this slot bigger because right now it's the exact right size for this. So I'm going to have to add some space for this extra little piece of white trim. So here we go. I water his son and I don't know it, it just ran it from God. Other than on violins, this is really about the first time I've installed solid wood, wooden binding. Now I have put this in before, this herringbone on other guitars, but I don't think I've actually used uh, wooden, you know, binding strips, that, I, especially that I've made myself. Anyway, I think I'm going to try to put them both in at the same time, and I think this white maple that I have here is flexible enough that I can just bend it and go with it as I want to go with it. I don't think it's going to break, especially holding it between the uh, the routed cavity and this herringbone and gluing it in here. I think it's going to work just fine. So that's my plan. I may live to regret it, but that's my plan. By the way, ordinarily I would have already routed all this other stuff around here, but because I'm, you know, because a little bit of this is new, you know, I haven't done it in a while. I'm just kind of using this to get my feet wet. And, and so I'm just doing this one side because it's just plain. So I'll kind of get my technique down again. And uh, by the time I get to the hard stuff, then it should be fairly easy. So that's why I'm saving this over here. I'm not even going to do this until this is all finished over here. What I'm going to do is just use plain old wood glue because everything is wood. So I'm just going to use tight bond. And I'm going to use it a little bit sparingly because I don't really want to have a lot of squeeze out. I'm going to just start right here and we're just working on this top shelf. One whole more thing. My sin spread out before your face As you look down on me I have no merit on my own In love has covered me You took upon your back a wooden cross And started on your way to Calvary Oh great the pain you never changed your mind It took your blood to set me free My praise I give to thee So thankful for amazing grace And that it reaches me There was indeed a ransom paid My freedom has been won The 
sacrifice was heaven's best. This is really turning out good. I'm real happy with it. Okay, I'm only going to go to the halfway point here, so I'm just putting glue on it up to that point. I'm going to leave the rest of it hang off of there. It's, I'm not going to cut it off right now. I'll cut it off later. Well, I felt like I hit my stride pretty good there, and we've got her all finished. Uh, like I said, I've only got glue up to the midway point here. This is all just hanging loose there. That's fine. I'll just cut that off after the glue sets. Um, that I'm pretty tickled with the way that turned out. I, I, I'd be honest, I was kind of dreading it because I knew real wood is generally harder to work with. But in this case, I think the real wood was actually easier. And that's probably partly because this herringbone already came pre-bent, which was very nice. And the other stuff was so thin that it just fit right in there. No problem at all. Now, I may change my tune when I go to put this on there because it's thicker. It's, it's twice as thick, although I think it's going to bend fairly easy. Well, I thought I had the camera on. I wasted a whole lot of good dialogue right there. But... What I did was I made myself a little pattern of the same width purfling that goes around here. So I just took that and laid it inside the little armrest and then just tried to cut that design right inside of here. And just then I just connected all the dots and cut it around by hand. You know, if I had a marking gauge, which I don't, a marking gauge would have helped me there maybe. But then again, I'm not 100% sure that this is all the same thickness because it tapers to it. You know, I don't know if that would have helped me that much or not. I'm just cutting it out by hand. I've, I went ahead and traced the whole thing with the little scalpel here provided by Charles. Charles, thank you again for the scalpel. Well, here goes nothing on an empty stomach. I'm going to just... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and extend this all the way around because I think that's going to have to be there regardless. But of God's own son, you took upon your back a wooden cross and started... Well, that helps, I think. It's just, it's a weird feeling doing this. Because <laughs> you... Ugh. You just never know how it's going to turn out and then see like that's going to be down and then I'll have to re-round this to fit this curve and so this binding is going to be thinner here and then come back up but I don't think there's any other way to do it. It looks like it's going to work just fine. While I've got the binding router set to the proper size for the white binding I'm going to go ahead and route the back to because it's set exactly right and it's a little difficult to get it just right. I'm a little leery about doing this. I'm afraid I'm going to do a lot of chip out damage here. I'm really kind of concerned about it, to be honest with you. But here we go, because this stuff is very brittle. On your way to Calvary, oh great, the pain you never changed your mind. It took your blood to set me free. My praise lift up to thee, lift up to thee. I think that took care of that binding around the back, at least on the thick piece. Now we'll still have to route the inner channel uh, for the other purflings that I'm going to put in there, but. I feel pretty good that that didn't really cause any chip out. So we're in pretty good shape. While I've got this guide on here, I'm going to go ahead and cut this top purfling slot. Wish me luck. Here we go.
seen a dog. I've got all the binding slots cut except for between the rest here and the top. And I've got that outlined, so I'm just going to take this. I've got a tiny, tiny bit on there. You probably can't even see it. And I'm going to use that for just cutting out the majority of this wood and getting it down to depth, and then we'll clean it up by hand. Growing wild in the woods, the story goes that little tree once was so large, but no more you see. So small, once made a cross for one and all, and it had thorns that made a crown for our king. So heaven bound. Just about ready to go ahead and glue this binding in around this breast. I've uh, been doing a lot of hand fitting off camera and I believe it's going to fit just fine now. It's, uh, it's, go well, it's going to be tight, but I think it'll go in there. I'm putting it in several little pieces. Uh, you can't really see the end joint and it just is easier to manipulate this heavy or the, this stuff in these really tight spots like I'm into here. And it had thorns that made a crown for a king so heaven bound. Well, that really turned out nice. I am just tickled with how that turned out. And uh, we got her bound all the way around now. We just don't have the outside binding, but the top, the hard part of that I think is done. The rest of this I think will be fairly straightforward, but I may find out that the next part's harder. I don't know. But that really turned out good. It looks good. I'm just pumped. Got the iron heated up here, and I'm going to try to pre-bend these a little bit just because I think they're going to be a little bit harder to make those real tight curves with without breaking. I've kind of leveled this binding out to the top and uh, it's not perfect yet. It needs a little bit more, but it's pretty close. I've kind of, I would just call it pre-flexing this. Uh, not exactly a full bend or anything, but I think it's going to be fine now. I think it's flexible enough after bending it around that iron to make it work. I'm going to start in the middle and work my way back around.
weathered and worn with the hinges all rusted. Just going to continue that all the way around to where the ends meet up and I'll show you what that looks like when we get there. I'm working my way around to the center joint here. I'm going to cut this just a little bit long of the center joint and I'm just going to use these nippers. It's just the fastest way and then I'll come back and trim it up with a chisel or something in a little bit. I just wanted to get to the end here where I can put some pressure on this all the way around here before I taped it to get it as tight around this corner as I could get it. All torn, but still cradled inside was one old precious thing. It was grandpa's old fiddle, oh how sweetly it rang. Grandpa's old fiddle played sweet melodies. He played it from his heart for my grandpa and me. Wrinkled old hands, he held it with love. And I can still hear it playing up in heaven above. man that I ever have seen and his time on this old earth was most precious to me he lived on current river at the mouth of the springs and at night the hills that go as the old fiddle would ring all right well we'll bring you back when we get to that joint at the end you can see how the two pieces of herringbone meet up on the top there and they go two different directions and then the binding here meets up on this end and then we've got to sand this all down flush and smooth yet but everything's looking really nice here's a close-up of the status at the moment we've cleaned up most of the binding around there it's starting to look really pretty it's going to be really pretty when the finish gets on there and I still got some cleanup to do on the edges of this binding and you know a little more you know right around the edges it needs more sanding and stuff but before I get to the final level of sanding we're going to go ahead and get the binding in the back Grandpa's old fiddle played sweet melodies he played it from his heart for my grandma old hands he held it with love and I can still hear it playing up in heaven above but just a boy had the time I remember a day when grandpa Well, now Grandpa, he has left us for... Get ready to start this part of the uh, trim. I've got that side all finished. But before I can start on this one, I have to square this off and get it cut off really perfectly straight and square. So I just take the uh, scalpel and I just start really lightly cutting it and just go deeper and deeper on each cut. I'm not too worried about if I scratch this area because this whole area is going to get dug out and we're going to put a in fancy inlay in here. So cutting down like right here doesn't really hurt anything even if I scratch all the way down in there. It really won't hurt a thing because all that's getting replaced anyway. Sweet melodies, he played it from his 
heart for my grandma and me. Wrinkled old hands, he held it with love, and I can still hear it playing up in heaven above. The old Well, there's a quick look at it all the way bound. That means the binding is done on the top and the back. So with a little cleanup here, we'll actually be ready to put the finish on this body. We haven't made the neck yet, but that wouldn't stop us from finishing the body if we decide to do that. I'm working on this end now to come up with something decorative to tie it in. And you know, this is way too big, but I'm thinking of something like this, except just narrow, having it come down in a V shape, something like this. It's a little bit too big, about maybe that size there, roughly. And then filling it in between there with the same vertical grain of the same wood, but having the grain go vertical. Anyway, making these strips thinner, it's hard to explain, but I think that'll look pretty cool once I get her done. I don't, I'm just debating on whether I would want something a different color here or maybe leave this out, make it a solid V and then put two black strips, a black strip on each side. That would look kind of pretty too, but the black on the outside of this doesn't really match anything else here. So I don't know if I really want the black. It's just you know, talking out loud, trying to come up with something. I mean, the simplest thing would just be to put a wide straight band down through here, white, and that would look okay. It would look fine, but I'd like to make it a little more decorative than that. So that's why I'm thinking maybe make two of them in slight V shape like that with the decorative down through the center. I think I'll make the piece up and see what it looks like, lay it up here and see what it looks like. Well, that's a little closer to the actual idea. And I think that might look just fine. Just messing around here, seeing what looks the best. And I think it gives it a little classier look to put the black in there, which I have now. I think you can see that. I don't know if you can get in close enough to see it real well or not. But, uh, you know, without the black in there, it looks fine, but it's just a little more plain. I think the black gives it just a little bit more oomph there. Makes it look a little bit cooler. So I think I will go ahead and put the black in there. Just not that much harder, harder to do, but it sure does make it look nice. Devised a little clamping system here. Because these parts are all cut on an angle, you you can't clamp it well. Well, it's in there so small, it'd be hard to clamp too. So I've just made myself a wedge where they fit real tight in here. I've got these edges real good and straight on the inside boards. And I've got some parchment paper down, so hopefully the glue you know won't stick to this too much. And now we just got to get glue on all the surfaces, which there's a bunch of surfaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight surfaces, it looks like, that we need to get glue on. And slide it in there, and we just can tap it in until it gets really tight, and then that'll be a good clamp. And with any luck, this will be longer than we need, so we'll be able to cut it off. Don't have to worry about the ends so much meeting up. Now that we got it in there, should be able to just tighten it up a little bit with this. Just pushing it down in there a little bit tighter, and it should just get tighter and tighter as it goes down in there. As far as I can tell, that looks like it's clamped up real well. 
and we'll just give that about an hour to set up and then we'll take it out of there and see what our next step is. The piece I made has been drying for oh a little less than an hour but I believe it's good. I took it over to the sander and cleaned it up and now you can kind of see the idea there what it looks like and I think it definitely looks nice. What I need to do now is figure out how to get that pattern transferred to it. And I'm going to transfer it from the small side up. Um, and that way if I get the crack a little too big I can push it down in there a little bit further before I cut it off. So I'm going to leave it long until we get her set in there. And if we need to tighten it a little bit we can always cut a little off the little end and push it down in a little further that way. So that's that's the game plan at the moment. Now the, the trick is how do I center it and I think I can just center it right off of the cracks there though that looks pretty good. The crack in the top and the crack in the bottom looks looks pretty good really. I think I'll just go with that. I've got the pattern traced on there. Now the trick is cutting these lines without screwing up something else. That's really the bottom line. I'm putting this straight edge just inside the pencil mark. I've got the scalpel here with the razor tip and I'm going to very lightly score it. And I, when I say lightly, I don't mean I'm pressing much at all. I'm just scratching it more like and I'll scratch it several times before I start putting up any pressure on there. scored all the way around. We'll uh, set up for the next step now. I've got this held in a vise uh, with towels around it and stuff. It's not real tight in the vise but you know I and I'm standing up because it's so tall and now I'm just I'm practicing here. I believe I've got this set to about the right depth. As a matter of fact I'm going to double check that before I go ahead and make my first cut here. But this is give you some idea of what we're expecting to do. Just going to uh, move it around and stay away from the lines. I don't really want to get up close to those lines. I can always finish it out by hand with a little chisel or something if I have to. But those crisp lines, I want to keep them crisp. Hopefully you can see the cut there. It looks pretty good. I think it's going to work pretty well. Um, obviously this isn't going to fit there real well yet, but uh, you can see how the idea there that it'll slide down in and get real tight. It's already looking pretty good. Just a little clean up now and I think we'll have it. I'm just going along these lines as carefully as I can. The scoring mark went down in there, but it didn't go all the way to the bottom, so I'm taking the scoring line and trying to run it to the bottom is really what it amounts to. So I'm really taking my time and making sure I'm only on the scoring mark there. As you can see, I've got it fitted in there pretty well. It's still sticking up proud, but it's in there very tight. Pushed down in there, there's, it's like airtight. So now I'm going to draw a line straight across there, and we're going to cut it off and stick it in there and glue her in place. The way I'm going to try to do that is just put my straight edge right across the binding there, where I can see it real clearly. Put a pencil mark. 
I'll cut that off with the bandsaw and get it close and then I'll just touch it with the disc sander until uh, that pencil line is just barely left there. I have not tried it yet so here we go. Okay it looks like it might still just be a hair long and that may be a good thing because it probably wouldn't hurt to touch this bottom up and what I'm doing is I'm undercutting this on the grinder and I think I'll undercut this and just leave it like it is but just undercut it and I think it'll go right in there. It was just within a thousandth of an inch of going it seemed like so what I think I'm going to do is just undercut this small edge right here leave the top edge and just undercut the small edge and I think it'll go right in. Got this fitting up really, really, really nice. Um, couldn't fit it much better, I don't think. So now we're gonna glue her in place. Well, I washed that off and you can see that it's wet but it's starting to dry now. These lighter colored places are where it's drying. And I can't really think of a good way to clamp that. I don't feel like putting band clamps all the way around there, but it feels like it's in there pretty tight. And I'm not really able to squeeze it down in there any further, so I think it's probably going to be just fine. Well, there's a close-up of the final look. I think you can see it very clearly there. There is no you know space in there at all it's perfectly smooth worked out really 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 nice I'm really happy with that so we're gonna leave it right there for this episode and uh, the next time you see this guitar we're gonna be putting finish on it I believe <laughs>